Hello and welcome back to the garden. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you some of the tasks that we'll be doing during the month of October. Now that the weather is starting to get colder, and the first frosts coming into October and early November are imminent, it's a good idea to be taking your tender perennials indoors or somewhere safe where they can be overwintered. So things like your pelagonians, so this is one we've had out during the summer for its summer holiday, and this will be being brought back indoors. And also things like your tender salvias, like this one here. So if it's a large specimen, you may not have space for it, so that is why we take cuttings so we can overwinter those cuttings much more easier. But I'm gonna take this whole plant. This whole plant is in a container. So I'm able to take the whole thing and I'm gonna place that into our summer house or somewhere like a cold greenhouse or a cool conservatory would also be ideal. And you don't really wanna be cutting this back at the point when you bring it in. Leave it, let the flowers continue to flower keep it watered but only just in the terms of keeping it so it's not completely dried out and we do the cutting back of these during the spring as we start to get new shoots emerging if you have dahlias it's a good idea to keep these outside until the frost actually gets to them and the leaves become blackened at this point if you live in the cold areas of the country you can bring these inside dry them off and store them over winter until planting out next spring. In warmer places, you can just leave them in the ground and give them a really good thick layer of mulch. In the meantime, keep deadheading the dahlias to prolong the flowering for as long as possible. Remembering that the ones that are elongated and more cylindrical are the ones that are spent and the ones that are more rounded shape are the ones that are just about to flower. Now is also a great time to be thinking about all the creatures and beasties and bugs that we share our gardens with now the weather is getting colder. So if you get a pile of leaves, some logs, some twigs, place them in a pile and just put them somewhere sheltered, maybe under a tree or by the side of a fence. And these creatures will find their way to it and it will just help them to overwinter in a secure place that is out of the worst of the cold and the wet. So I've just got a wooden box that I've created from pallets and just placed in some cuttings from the garden, some evergreen leaves, deadheading some of the cosmos and some of the gara. You can just place that in the garden, perhaps get something like this grate, or pop that over the top, secure it in place, and just place that on its side where the bugs and the beasties can overwinter. Now I did do another video, which I'll put a link to at the top of the screen, on how to make a bug hotel using tin cans. So recycling tin cans with a mixture of different things like pine cones, twigs, leaves, grass cuttings. And it just makes a nice little home for all the beneficial creatures and insects that we share our garden with. Still on the subject of helping all our beasties and creatures to overwinter, it's a really good idea to leave your perennials standing and do the cutback during the spring. So things like this Rebecca things like sedum, asters, echinacea. They're all plants that also look great during the winter months, especially if we get frost and maybe even snow. These bring structure, the skeletons bring lots and lots of interest during the colder winter months, rather than just having clear bare soil. It's also great because these structures also provide a place where these insects can climb into seed heads and into hollow stems where they can hibernate and get safety until the warmer weather comes in the spring. So we leave all of this standing through the autumn, right through the winter, right into spring. And this not only provides us structure and interest, but it also provides lots of places for the creatures and bugs that we share the garden with to be protected over those colder months. If you can remember back to last month, I was talking about making preparations for your spring bulbs and deciding which varieties you want to grow and purchasing those bulbs. So we have some here and these are some of the ones we'll be growing this year and 
basically flowering in the spring. So this one is the Narcissus Martinet. This is one of our favorite daffodils. Has lovely, lovely scent. Very, very sweet scent, very fragrant and multiple heads with these lovely yellow petals and the orange center. So we'll be planting those. And the main thing to do, if you're gonna plant these in containers, make sure that you're using some free draining compost. So get some added grit and that will just help to prevent these from rotting. And when you're planting these, make sure they're planted at the right depth. So you're looking at maybe two times at least the height of the bulb itself. Another daffodil we're going to be planting this month is one called Silver Chimes and we have grown this many many years ago. It's a really good favourite of ours and it is a lovely white variety and is multi-headed and has really really strong fragrance. So between that and the Martinet we're going to have a spring filled with so much scent. It's going to be fantastic. We leave our tulips till the very earliest during the month of November and even December and this just helps to make sure that we reduce the chances of the tulips getting viruses. Dried hydrangeas make some fantastic additions to flower arrangements and also Christmas wreaths. Now this one behind me has some beautiful autumnal colours already coming onto it. These lovely reds and these lovely violets. Take a look at the video we did on how to dry hydrangeas using a method whereby you take your flower head, you dunk it in water for a couple of hours and then you place the stem into a vase of water and allow it to dry naturally. And with the results between doing it with this method and just taking the hydrangea flower off and placing it into a vase of water, we did find that the one where you dunk it first for a few hours does keep much more of the colour in the hydrangea flowers. So we do suggest that you do the dunking in the water first. There are lots and lots of perennials that are now ready to be collecting seeds from. This one is Liatris spicata, and this had the most beautiful purpley pink spires. And now you can see it's going to seed. So on a dry day, you need to be dry, you don't want the seed to be rotten. What we need to be doing is collecting these and storing these in paper envelopes. So in the case of this, just pick up a handful of seed. These seeds are fascinating, they've got little parachutes at the end of them. And we just place them into a paper envelope that's been pre-labeled with the name. Now these are a plant that we will be sowing during the winter because they need, these need to have the cold stratification method. It needs to have a period of cold followed by a period of warm in order to get them to germinate. So we'll be keeping these somewhere nice and cool, somewhere dark and sowing them at a later stage. And this is a great way of keeping costs down with gardening, collecting your own seeds and growing your own plants. Nothing can be easier and nothing can be better. A lot of the calendula seeds now are also ready for collection. So I'm just placing them on this tray to make sure they are thoroughly dry before they're stored. These are hardy annuals, so these can also be sown during the autumn and overwintered for earlier blooms next year. Now if you want to see more of our recommendations for doing this for hardy annual sowing during the autumn, please refer to the video I've just put a link up to in the corner of the screen and that just shows a video from a couple of years ago that we did of different flower seeds to grow in the month of October. One last thing I'd like to say is do get yourself out and about during this month. Visit gardens, there are some phenomenal displays of gardens for their autumnal colour, the colour of foliage changing, the lovely seed heads. It's just a wonderful time of year to be enjoying our gardens and other people's gardens too and there are so many gardens that are still open during this month for you to visit and many will be incorporating the Halloween season as well towards the end of the month. Thank you so much for watching please hit that like button please subscribe and if you do have any comments please drop them in the comments box below the video. I'm going to go inside now and get myself a nice warm drink because it's quite chilly. Um, please enjoy your garden still during this month there's lots and lots of things to be doing and we will see you very, very soon on the next one. In the meantime, please do take care.